recording in progress. Do we have it? Okay. okay. <laughs> Hi, good evening, all. Welcome to town board meeting, October 13th, 2021. We rise and salute the flag. We Councilman Here. Councilman Dusty. Here. Councilman Fabio. Here. Councilman Waterhouse. Here. Here. Uh, good morning or good evening, all and all out in um, space land out there. Hope you all can hear us. We're trying really hard to get this uh, under control. David's doing a good job, and I think we were all on there tonight. And uh, when you when you want to talk, please just give us your name and, and uh, keep your questions brief. And I also would like to uh, introduce the attorney that's here, Michael Pro from Fitzgerald, Morris, and Baker firm. And uh, he's going to be sitting in tonight for us. And the only other thing that's not on the agenda at the end of the meeting, I'd like to have a uh, executive session. It's really important. Uh, it's a personnel matter. So that's why the attorney will be with us too. Okay. Um, Ron? Campground, board rate campground. I gave each uh, board number a packet on what? Um, I don't see any uh, issues up there. They uh, they got their good press and everything that they needed. Um, I did tell them that everything's out on their expense. And they need to provide a new hydrant up there at Harris Road. So, that's what I got. Do we need to make these motions move forward? Is there a Cory Ball shot? Not that I can see by name. You can ask, ask if I'm going to raise his hand if he doesn't. What's the name? Corey Wall. Uh, the only person with their hand raised right now is Mr. Goldberg. He was, I, I told him how to get the Zoom number and all that. What, what's he putting in? What's he inputting in front? What's that? What's he going to say? What was he going to talk about? Tell you about the war. Uh, he, he just wanted to talk about the report on. Uh, what they their intentions are, and they, and they want to put a line underneath sign in and put a meter on their side and uh, give the upper half of the campground supplied water. Um, he came with a presentation before, right? Okay. Well, yeah. It came and did a presentation for us a while ago, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I don't see any issues. Have you got any paperwork actually, Ron, in regards to them saying that all expenses on them? Uh, I have emails. Uh, I have emails. I'd like to see something in writing, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, if, uh, can we move ahead with it until you get the URI, right, get the writing? What do you want it before we go? Do they plan on putting this in this fall or come yes. spring? This, uh, not this fall, in the spring. In the spring? Yes. So in other words, we got time to get the paperwork done. Yes. I make a motion we hold until we get the paperwork signed in the All right, everybody happy with that? Is there stuff we need to sign around the contracting or does anybody know or is it just we're just gonna make uh, a motion and pass it? I was it's pretty much you vote on it and pass it. I'll have, the paperwork that he's asking, and uh, if there's anything more you want to it, to yeah. add to it. But there's fine. no actual contract with the state. So I, I can ask this Corey. Um, so if, if they're going to be paying for things, I'm sure there has to be a contract, right? I mean, yeah. I don't know if the state's going to cut a check without having something signed that you 
can spin a voucher on or I, I'm not right. saying that no, okay. but I'm just yeah. questioning that. Yeah, I the only thing I, is are you going to expend your men there to do the actual type? No, I will oversee it though when they do. So they're going to do the digging. Yeah, they're doing it all on it's all there. Well, I guess my question, of course, you always have to look at it. Yeah. If something screws up, mm -hmm. who's held like? Well, why don't we have an attorney here? Why don't we let the white way in before sure. we all? Yeah, I guess what I'd like to see, Ron, if you have the, the documentation that you're going to uh, forward it, if you can um, shoot that to me as well. Okay. Yeah, I'll shoot, I'll shoot you all the emails that I have. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, I think that would give us an idea of, uh, you know, Who's doing what? Um, you know, who's going to be responsible mm -hmm. for what? And um, you know, kind of put some parameters and, and uh, uh, you know, outline exactly what the obligations are. What town is um, you know being um, uh, required to do or oversee? And um, um, that I think you know, hopefully, should then clarify things. And then you know, to the extent that um, you know, it's not spelled out. We can put that into uh, a contract, uh, an MOU, or uh, some form of binding uh, agreement, so that there's clarity for you, the board, to know what you're getting into. Mike, can you um, while you get all that information, I think you, maybe you should draw up that contract. Yeah, and so we have the right wording in it to protect us. Absolutely. I guess first I, I want to see, you know, kind of um, what's already been established. Um, but yeah, we can we can certainly put something together. Yeah, it's better off coming through you back to us. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. And I'll get you know, all the emails and everything that sure. you, you need. Yeah. Definitely going forward, we should have everything ready. I'm just thinking too, Mike, do you know what happens if one of your friends are digging under nine and they pop through the pavement or you know, something silly like that happens? Who's going to be on the hook for? For all that stuff certainly can't be us. So well, right. that's one of my questions is why wouldn't we have the meter be, before it goes under the road? Because now if it breaks to the meter, it's on us. That if they're if they're digging under the road and putting the line in there for just them, the meter should be under the side of the road. The hydrant on the campground side of the hydrant. Because if we've got to replace road and I mean that's gonna be yeah, just like a normal, big number. or just a scribe. Yeah, right. Like normal. Normal. Are they gonna put a T in there? And yeah, they're gonna put tea and they're gonna and a head on to it. So if for some reason down the road we can and want to expand the water district possibly yes. in years to come, is that figured into what they plan on doing? Or wasn't that even brought up? That wasn't really brought up. My part was where they're gonna go onto the road, they're gonna replace that hydrant. Yeah. And then go a little farther, do their tea. And then put one length on with a cap. So I'll verify all this before we put on to do anything. Maybe be worthwhile instead of just a cap, maybe a valve there. So a cap and a valve. Cap so and a valve. If yeah. we do want to extend the water, you got to have one length and then a thrust block. Yeah. It would be good to have them show up or get on Zoom or do something. To he was that. supposed to today. Uh, I could just. I can get a hold of tomorrow and tell them everything that we talked about and what I'm sure Mike and Gene and uh, we'd all like to see a schematic of what they're yeah. doing and you know just yeah. to well, protect you too, Ron. You know? There's a little schematic in your in your right. back end. Right. But, right. but we'll, we can probably get more in depth. Thank you. So we'll, we'll give you another month and hopefully we can, we can come up with the right contract, the working agreement. Everything that they they're responsible for, whatever we're responsible for. All right. I'd like to open the floor out there to any comments on resolutions that are coming up tonight. I have Mr. Goldberg with his hand raised. And I'm unmuting him now. I'm muting you. This is not on resolution. I hear it. Yes. Um, it may not be on the resolution, but this Zoom meeting is the only Zoom meeting without the major participants, the board, being on Zoom. You guys should have your laptops. There is not a state, federal, or county that I have watched over the last two years that the leaders of the Zoom meeting are not on Zoom. 
you guys got masks. We don't know who's talking. Next meeting, you must have Zoom laptops on there, and we can see you. You're the only ones I've ever seen without that. How about if we just announce our name or something before we, so Mr. Goldberg knows who's speaking with the mask and he can't tell who's speaking at the Is that what you're trying to say, Mr. Goldberg? You don't, you can't identify who's talking? I'm having trouble even hearing you through the mask. I'm sorry. Did what, Patricia, what did he say? I said, would it be more, more helpful if we identified ourselves before we said? Of course, of, absolutely. Awesome. Every you, participant, including including the town board and Ron, who's over on the left and we can't see him, should be on so that we can see each speaker as they speak. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. If it, makes it, if it makes it any better, how about when whoever's speaking lowers their mask down a little bit and make it That's, easier to get down? No, you know. No, it's just as easy to have you, much easier to have your laptop so that we can see the full screen of each of you while you're speaking. That's, there is no other Zoom that, and I'm on Zoom a lot, that I've ever seen where the participants, the major ones, are not on Zoom. Mr. Goldberg, Mike Fazio, we're, we are working on that. And last meeting, we talked that we did have race supply come in to try and make our Zoom experience better. And obviously, we know that we're not where we want to be, but we are making strides to, to get it where it should be. And, and we do recognize that. So we are, you, we are working. You are recognizing the fact that you are not on Zoom. Yes? That you personally aren't on. There's no other Zoom meeting where a speaker is not on Zoom, particularly the leaders. Are, are we on? Are we, I have it. I have the camera focused on Mr. Merlino, Mr. Waterhouse, Mr. Fazio, Mr. Lewandowski, Mr. O'Neill. If I can give my two cents, I think what he's requesting is that he wants all people that are up there on their own individual computer at the same time. No, can you move it as like say when Ron talks that in? Can you just Absolutely. Get down in and my talks game. That's what it, I think that's what they're looking for. No. To see the person who talks. That's right. When when you talk, we'll only see you large screen. And then when Ron uh, Ron speaks, we see Ron because it comes up the way we see it. I've never seen a meeting like this, and I'm on Zoom a lot. Well, thank you. We're working on it. All right, we're that's not on a technical it. issue. That's not a technical issue. If you guys can just sign on to say you do and we can then see you just like the public see uh, sees themselves on zoom that's not a technical issue Mr. Goldberg, do we all need our own piece of equipment in order to do that yes yes yeah just bring your laptop in and sign on the way we do you'll just be another participant and each time we see who's speaking that's very very <laughs> simple that's what it is yeah, I, 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 the meeting is that way. Each individual is seen. Whenever you speak at the at the county, your particular laptop screen is shown to all of us. I stand so I can explain. The county put a screen on everybody's desk, and when we get there, the meeting. We don't have that equipment here, right? Now. Right, I understand that. There are many since COVID. The federal government, uh, the F, the any organization, each one has their own laptop. People are at home. You guys could each be at home, and you could be on Zoom individually. So you're together. You should be individuals. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We'll try to work on that. And see what thank you. All right, anybody else out there? All right, we'll close that and we'll have the clerk read the resolutions, please. First, I would like to thank uh, the attorneys this afternoon that worked all day with me on this. So there would be a motion to approve the minutes of the September 7th agenda meeting, September 21st regular meeting, and October 4th agenda meeting. 
I'll make that motion. Second. All right. Council Fazio. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Resolution 152 of 2021. Resolution authorizing payment of monthly vouchers of the 10th abstract as filed in the office of the town clerk of Lake Luzerne. Whereas the town board of Lake Luzerne is obliged to review various vouchers submitted for payment and shall review same on a monthly and or periodic basis for confirmation and accuracy and authorized payment of same pursuant to and in compliance with the laws of the state of New York, Warren County, the town of Lake Luzerne. The totals for the numbered vouchers in the abstract are general fund 27809 to 27852, totaling $26,253.88. The highway fund 27786 to 27808, totaling $12,770.07. Lake Luzerne Water, 27853 to 27864 in the amount of $33,848.19 and Hudson Grove Water District 27865 $25. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the supervisor is hereby authorized to pay the monthly vouchers approved and set forth from the 10th abstract of 2021. Can I get a motion? I like motion to get those. Motion by Councilman Waterhouse. Is there a second? Councilman O'Neill. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, carried. Five zero. Resolution 153 of 2021, a resolution authorizing the allocation of and payment from the Town of Lake Luzerne occupancy tax funds to support the Pug Parade. Whereas the Town of Lake Luzerne annual re annually received its share of occupancy tax revenue from Warren County to be used to support and promote travel and tourism in the town. And whereas the town board has identified the Pug Parade as an appropriate and eligible event to receive a portion of said occupancy tax funds, now therefore be it resolved that the supervisor is hereby authorized to distribute funds in the total amount of $809 for the following items relating to the Pug Parade. Pam Warren reimbursement for payment to Absolute Sounds, $200. AA tents for tables and chair rentals, $245. Advertising the local first paper, $246. Ketchum manufacturing, $118. Is there a motion? I'll second that. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried five zero. Resolution 154 of 2021. Resolution authorizing the payment in the amount of $1,342.53 to Joan Moralia for vehicular damages sustained at Glens Falls Mountain Road during Town Highway Department Road work. Whereas on or about August 2nd, 2021, Joan Morelia sustained damage to her vehicle while driving on Glens Falls Mountain Road through a marked town highway department road work project. Whereas the estimate of the amount of damages sustained in the vehicle is $1,342.53. And now therefore be it resolved that the supervisor is hereby authorized to make payment in the total amount of $1,342.53 to Joan Morelia for vehicle damage sustained while traveling on Glens Falls Mountain Road through Mark Town Highway Department Road Work Project. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Councilman O'Neill, is there a second? I'll second. Councilman Waterhouse. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried by zero. 
Resolution 155 of 2021, the resolution authorizing Councilman Fazio to seek votes for the purchase of an iPad to be used by the zoning officer and assessor while in the field. Whereas it has been determined that it is in the best interest of the town to procure an iPad to be used by the zoning officer and the assessor while in the field for efficiency and for proper record keeping. And whereas it was determined that Councilman Fazio has the most expertise in this area and will seek cost proposals to be presented to the town board for consideration. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Councilman Fazio is hereby authorized and directed to seek cost proposals for an iPad to be presented to the town board for consideration to be used by the zoning officer and assessor. Is there a motion? I'll make motion. All right, so we'll just make the motion that you have the authority to do that. I'm not going to buy it, I'm just going to bring forward. And there's also some programs that might have to be purchased to go on it as well. But get, the whole, get the whole list and we'll, we'll shoot it out. Okay. But we'll make, I'll make the motion and move forward with it. The motion. I'll second it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried 5 0. Um, uh, resolution. Are you okay with it? I mean, we have to set date right? So I didn't know that we did it or not. So that's why I'm just left the other. The, uh, the, the first date on there, the, the public hearing has to be done. Like if the first Thursday after the election, so it only leaves us two days. So. No, no, let's read them off and then we'll move it forward. You guys read them all off. Okay. Resolution setting dates for town board budget workshops, special meetings, public hearing on the preliminary budget, a special town board meeting to adopt a final budget. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the dates and times are set and established as follows Town of Lake Luzerne Town Board. Uh, 2022 budget workshop special meetings Wednesday, October 20th at 6 p.m. Wednesday, October 27th, 6 p.m. if needed. Public hearing on the preliminary budget Wednesday, November 3rd at 6 p.m. The November agenda meeting of the town board is Wednesday, November 3rd at 7. It did make sense to have on that Monday with the voting machine. November regular town board meeting, Monday, November 8th at 7. Special town board meeting to pass the budget, Monday, November 15th at 7. Be it further resolved to ensure complete transparency in town government, tentative budget shall be published immediately on the town of Lake Luzerne website and made available to the public by the town clerk. And further be it resolved from this date forward that the annual tentative budget shall be made available to the public on the date of filing by the budget office. We didn't even think about it last week, guys. Is, you know, once that was turned into your office and being stamped as received, that's a public document. So there's no reason that it shouldn't be put up there for everybody to see because it could be foiled, it could be anything. So, you know, for transparency, I really think if we're going to have a public hearing, people should be able to see it before they comment on it. It's not really fair to the taxpayers to have to come up with ideas and recommendations on something that they haven't. Well, the only seen. comment I'd like to make on that is when you made that comment and I said, no, as a rule, we don't do that. Um, I was citing from my own text on preparing the budget and um, the steps are all taken from sections of town law. Sure. But I don't think that supersedes the public right now. I really don't know that. And, and I agree with you 100%. But in the case of what happened, after we presented the budget last week, we did have a, 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 com, a discussion with some of the employees about, like we did with the EMS squad, you know, trying to break everything, bring everybody up, and uh, let's get them to a Sort of second uh, year coming with federal wages, and, and that's what happened. This went out now over the weekend. We did take some time, we did take some time with Linda Kalender and, and uh, Colleen, and we came up with a new proposal for the salary portion of the budget. So now that you have a new one, which is orange, 
and, and I feel now maybe you can put it out uh, just because it does we need some time sometimes to uh, but get changes. Kelly on. said at the meeting last time that it was fine to go online. Just, just because we publish it doesn't mean that it's finalized or anything. We have room to massage it and make changes and all that stuff. And that we, so we publish it with every change right up to the preliminary. Well, now today, I think tonight we have to change it over um, from preliminary to tentative. No, we still didn't have those work. It stays work. tentative until you've hammered out what you want it to look like for a public hearing. You can also make minor changes to the preliminary budget. Correct. But um, you know, you can make any number of changes to this tentative budget. Mm -hmm. Then you move it to a preliminary stage and hold a, a public hearing on the preliminary budget. And um, Wait. yeah. Um, so what we were looking into is um, uh, in the the temporary status it um like you said councilman it would be a, a public record and so it is something that is um foilable or publicly accessible it does not however unlike the um preliminary budget it doesn't have to be produced uh, in, in other words it doesn't have to be uh, printed out and made available for people to come and get so <laughs> if, they, uh, if that document is foiled for example um, regular foil types of um, you know, charges could be incurred. If, if it's posted online, that's that's fine. Like said, it is a public record, but it's subject to foil. The preliminary budget is accessible over and above the uh, the foil access requirement. The par the paragraph on uh, the public hearing on the preliminary budget is the public hearing on the preliminary budget must be held no later than the first Thursday following election day. Notice of the public hearing may be published in the official newspaper, must be published in the official newspaper and any other paper that the town directs. In addition, the notice should, the notice should be posted on the town clerk's sign, sign board and the town's website stating the time and all the necessary things, the elected salaries and, and that sort of thing. So that is just the, the process that we've done for 20 years. You can do whatever you want to, but um, because the public hearing document is really the one that you put forth to the public. Uh, you know, I don't think it's either way, it's just, I want just a little safety. Make sure it's right to discuss it. We're working out this way. Somebody don't say, "Well, I read one two weeks ago and it says this, and now it's another one that says that." Could confuse people, but to me, it makes no difference. Whatever the board wants to do, we can do. But we should have a lot of workshop to hammer out the stuff, make changes, and then go out to the world. Are, are you comfortable posting it now or not? He said he was. I'm comfortable with the, the second one now that we. The, the biggest part of the problem that's not the problem that we solved and, and took care of. <clears throat> but the whole thing, we put it out and then we have our workshop. If we don't agree with it, then changes have to be made. Sure, that's to put out again. So that, that's what I mean. It gets confusing. So this would be resolution 156. <clears throat> Okay, and then you all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? There's only two changes. If it's the salary and the wage staff, if you really want to know, it's probably six or seven. We get most of the people up for twenty dollars an hour, <laughs> something more. Where did you balance the revenue from? Uh, we balance the revenue from because we, we had a need to pay off the stuff, stuff and stuff in the month of two, so we're going back to the we take the same one year for next year, and then well, I'm taking that 25000 that we're going to put out and the garbage claims payment. And we took a little more out of it, so we kind of spent it out. So worked out. The bottom line doesn't change as far as you want to look at it. Um, so that's the 
that's that's the way it, it worked out well well that time. Before we move on, I have. Okay. So we we're all right with that. Okay. Hey, you want to go on to reports? Anybody else have anything? So we'll move on to reports. We'll have a report from the attorney. Sure. Um, well, first of all, um, I guess I'd like to thank uh, Cindy and, and Karen. We're, we're trying to kind of switch horses in midstream here and make sure that um, we're getting you um, um, the support that you need in, in the way that you're essentially used to seeing it. So um, the first uh, item of concern for us is to make sure that um, you know the product that you're getting is, is what you're looking for, and you know we'll um, you know help massage the process to to get whatever it is that that you need. But uh, you know, uh, both Cindy and Karen have been uh, helpful in kind of getting us up to speed. There's a number of other things that we we'll want to um, kind of dive in and take a look at to um, uh, fully get up to speed here. Um, but like I said. In the interim, um, if anything comes up, please reach out to us. Um, and, you know, with that, I think the um, the other aspect is we want to make sure, I guess, that we can be um, uh, greatest value to the board. So if there's something that um, we're doing just because that's the way it's always been done, but there's a uh, better way or a different way. Um, you know, we, we'd be open to exploring that as well to make sure that, you know, we're uh, presenting, I guess, the, the best value uh, for the town and giving the, um, uh, the, the best advice and um, what's uh, most feasible. One other thing that um, um, we had prepared uh, along with um, the... Uh, Resolution, don't remember, uh, resolution 154 was a, um, a release, essentially an, an acknowledgement um, uh, by the payee that um, they're um, releasing any claims that the town would have for any additional damages that, that may have um, uh, been found out, uh, or you know, essentially that the amount that the town is paying is going to cover the entirety of the claim. Um, and so I'll, I'll work with Cindy on, on getting that. And that'll kind of be, like I said, the receipt that the town will get for that payment. Uh, aside from that, um, uh, uh, nothing um, further from our standpoint uh, at this point, but like I said, just kind of leave an open line of communication to any and each of you to reach out and um, let us know um, what you'd like to see, what you wouldn't like to see. Mike, um, what you just spoke of, mm -hmm. should we add that on to that resolution as an add on? Because we already approved to pay it. Right. But should we leave it under the same um, uh, number or make it an add on? It, it, it'll just because I think it's a great idea. Yeah, it, essentially, it's this will just be more or less be a uh, acknowledgement or receipt of the funds um, you know, from the person receiving them that you know, they have gotten it and that this is kind of the town's um, security that that payment satisfies the obligation. So I don't think that anything has to be changed regarding resolution. This is just kind of, in essence, the, the paperwork um, involved in the transaction. That's it. That's it. Good idea. Yeah. Right. <coughs> did you have a resolution about campgrounds and parks or something? Yeah, and I'll, when we do my report, I can get to that. Okay. okay. So just to make sure we didn't miss passing it. We have to pass a resolution. Yeah. For you. Yeah. It, it, I don't know if we need a resolution. It'll just be a motion. I think, but I'll get to it. Okay. Okay. okay we'll go to the group. Um, I'm going to start. In two weeks, the 25th is ball cleanup. Um, the hydrant is installed up on 9 net. We're just adding a little material behind it for stabilization and we'll topsoil and seed it. Uh, we're working on the hydrant crossing daily hill. We're 
trying to rebuild it, but there's a couple of parts inside that are need uh, replacing. Um, my next hydra I'd like to replace is up on uh, Lady Slipper Lane. It's a reverse uh, thread, so you, you reverse it to turn it on. So it's not very handy to have on our system. Um, in the mountain road, we are nearly complete on that section. Uh, the Warren County's shoulder machine, their transmission went in their shoulder machine. So I'm looking to see if Crimp will let us borrow theirs when they're done with theirs. Um, well, other than that, that's all. That's all. Okay. Thank you, Ron. Any questions, Ron? <clears throat> all right. Uh, Karen, the intern. Okay, this is Karen, the company, the zoning officer. Um, yeah, I have submitted to all of you my report. In that report, I had made my yearly inspection on the campgrounds and mobile home parks. And I just need, I believe I just need a motion from the board to accept my report so that we can send out the yearly um, packet that I send out asking for information, owner information, contact information on these lots and they pay a yearly fee to keep their operating permit for the year. So um, we've always in the past just done it as a motion, not necessarily a resolution. If the lawyer feels we need a resolution, we can certainly go that way, but usually it's just done by a motion to accept our report and to send out that packet to the owners. Okay, motion to accept the, the report is and I'll make that one. One second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Aye. Zero. Okay, one other item that's come up um, since the agenda meeting is as you are aware, we had in the zoning and zoning board of appeals and the planning board an application for a cell tower on Hall Hill. The, and as a board, you approved um, the town hiring an outside consultant to review that application for those boards. He submitted one bill already that it, and they submitted a $5,000 um, check to be held in escrow. We made that one payment, it was not $5,000. Since then, last week, I received his final um, statement of services. And um, basically, I've contacted AT&T to let them know that we have received that final bill. They need to submit to us a balance of $2,875, which they have indicated we should receive. Well, last week they indicated we should receive it within two weeks, and then we can make that final payment to um, the consultant. Um, I am wondering if I can get approval. I don't know how this really works, but once we receive that check and it goes into that escrow um, payment, can we have in place some kind of a um, motion to allow the bookkeeper to pay that bill, or do you need to have it included in the next abstract that comes up? Probably, and I'm hoping we'll have it done by November. But so I'm just looking for some guidance here as to how you, as a board, want to handle that. Well, I think it should handle like the regular bill. Get the money in. Get the money in. And it out to where it has to go. And put it in the abstract. abstract. Okay. Just so everybody knows what it is and where it's going. Okay. You should never put money for ATAT. That's for sure. Yeah, I am expecting that to come in any day. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. <coughs> the last thing um, that I have, I handed out to you a, a um paper that i had printed off of the county gis program it's and i had highlighted two parcels in there i i received a call this week from a gentleman who is looking to buy the parcel that is obviously not owned by the town and his question to me was 
if I buy that parcel, can the town owns that other parcel down by the river? And he said, I, I understand that that beach has been closed, which it has been. We haven't had lifeguards there because we haven't had, we've had lack of staff. And I don't know how many years that has not been open, but his question was, does he have a right to come across that town property that used to be a beach with a kayak, put his kayak in the water and access the river from the town property? Now we've had this year, for some reason, we've had quite a few of these situations come up about town-owned properties and people accessing the water off of the town-owned properties. Um, I know that there's this, you know, the instance up by the Nar Lane area, and I know that we've had issues over on Sylvan with the kayaks, and we've moved the kayak rack and all of that. So this gentleman asked me, and I, I, so that I can answer people when they call, I would like clarity on what the use of town land is by the citizen, citizens or not even citizens of the town. Are they allowed to access these waters through those properties? I mean, they're not, this, this beach is not manned by a lifeguard, or certainly. Personally, they're not like, supposed to be on town property. Is it posted? Uh -huh. Does it have to be posted? It probably has to be there. No trespassing. It would depend on the parcel. You know, but it, it also, like, the parcel is. Mike, to bring you up to speed, what it is, is a beach area that the town has known for numerous years due to uh, basically getting staff commanded during the uh, season uh, for lifeguards and like that. Uh, we have not been able to staff that. We were lucky enough to staff the two beaches up here at the main lake. And this is where it's coming from. Okay, right now, everybody knows in that area knows it's the town area. That's where we stand with that. Sure. Do we have to post that? Do they have the right to cross that to use for access to the river? Well, I guess there, there isn't any... Um, uh, overarching or generalized right to access. And so um, it, it is dependent on the particular parcel. And I think obviously there's there's concerns on one hand, you have you know liability concerns, especially when there's water involved. Um, you've got um, a free flow of people entering and exiting the water with no um, uh, lifeguards or any type of supervision. So um, that is obviously a concern. And on the other hand, you have, um, you, know, um, you know, some um, real estate that is, um, you know, has value to the citizens and you want to be able to make it um, useful and, and available. Um, and so, you know, I, I think, you know, what um, what I would say, I'd, I'd want to kind of look into possibly some more um, details regarding the specific request from Karen. And if we think that, you know, um, that the risk for that particular beach area without there being any staff or any type of um, uh, uh, lifeguards or any supervision, um, is too great for you know what you can offer. You know, if, if there's another access point that's nearby, or you, know, you can kind of um, you know deal with it that way. Um, then I think probably um, you would want to more or less close that beach, post it, and not allow access again if that risk kind of outweighs the um, the public benefit of it. If we ever want to sell that, what do we do? We, we, uh, that may be the, the best option that we're going to be liable that much for it when we're going to open it. Might be a, a better idea that we uh, turn sure. a desirable piece of property down there. <laughs> Just below, if you're looking at the picture, going down, that property, gentlemen, a couple of times over the years, in the past, he could buy that. Only using that as a beaver, so it's closed. Right. But you 
committed right now, they had the problem with that is that there's nothing for us to stop people, especially in that area. A lot of people, and I'm not picking up current, but a lot of people go there just come down and swim there. When we had light, we you know that. Mike, would it be a smart idea for us to reach out to our insurance company? Um, you know, you know, NYMIR is our insurance company. And yeah. They would probably weigh in on what we can or can't do or should yeah. do down there to protect ourselves as well, right? Yeah, all, yeah, all those properties that are already covered by insurance. Mm -hmm. okay. Sure. No, well, they're not all beaches, though. So I'm saying you, right. you varies by parcel. So, what's your opinion on that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I think that um, that makes a lot of sense, especially you know if that one in particular is closed as opposed to the others. You know, you, now you've kind of got um, you know that one is you know kind of an outlier. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd recommend that. And you know, like I said, I'd also um, I'll contact Karen and, and look kind of. Specifically at that parcel and at the um, you know the concerns associated with it, and um, you know come up with um, you know what um, uh, what options you have, and you know present those to you, and you know give you whatever um, uh, recommendations that um, we feel is appropriate. I just say something on that because I'm down there quite often. Is there's a lot of people that go there and park. I mean, we might want to block off the parking lot for there. There are constantly people parking there and going in the water all the time. That's the only other problem that happens in the Once people start knowing, oh, we can go there, we can go there, yeah. we know if they camp in there, not sure, but spend the day putting the blankets on the ground. And Did you notice, Pim, that it was in a lot of disrepair down there, too? I mean, the beach itself is really. Yeah. Pretty degraded. It was bottles. Well, we yeah. that's what happens. It gets loose, and then we have to get down and clean it. So, right. So, so yeah, they have a parking area, so they go there. Sure. At yeah. this at this point, someone asking the question, can they access town mm -hmm. property? I think the answer should be no until we can really come up with something. Yeah, it, I mean, and it's it's parcel by parcel because you, you can't say that you can access all town property. You can't so come to town hall business. when it's closed. You know, when it's locked, you can't break in. Um, you have other um, areas of town property that you, you can't allow people into, you know, for security or safety reasons. And so there isn't, I guess, a, a blanket rule that we can say, Yes, because it's town property, you can access it. Um, depending, I guess, on the, the status of the closure, um, to me, it sounds like um, the, the intent was to have that beach closed. And so for there not to be public access there because you didn't have it staffed. Um, if we need to take more formal steps to either close it, or open it with some limitations in place. Um, you know, that I, I think is probably the next step to address and, and to bring for you is, you know, can we do it in a way that still makes use of the property or is the, the liability too high? Like what about the assumption of risk for each property? That would have to be weighed in as well, right? If you're coming into the town hall to get a dog license, or some their fishing license from Cindy is much less risk than letting somebody access the beach with a kayak to go in the water. Do we weigh that in when we decide what we want to do as well? Yeah, but and again, I, I don't think you can um, just say every town property is accessible 24 7. You got to be able to have um, some safety measures in place based on the inherent risks of that particular piece of property when there's water involved or there's other um, you know elements involved um, you know dangerous elements involved you, you gotta be able to put some restrictions in place that um, protects the um, the citizens and protects the town right okay we'll probably work on something Karen we'll see what we come up with <coughs> We'll discuss yeah. it and go from there. But to answer this particular gentleman, I'll just tell him that um, right now the, it's considered that beach is closed and that it's not accessible, I guess is what at I the time. At the present time. Okay. Um, that's all I have. All right, thank you. Tom Clark, Sophia.
I always make reference to the uh, monthly report to the supervisor. So the September uh, clerk report to the supervisor has been distributed to the town board. Local shares remitted in the amount of $6,779.75. Um, I've also given you the uh, municipal shelter inspection report that uh, is satisfactory for countryside. That's the New York State inspection of that facility. In that regard, I, bought, I gave you last week, I think, the, uh, the communication from them that they were going to add a yearly administrative fee of $250 to our agreement. Um, at the bottom of that letter, the questions that were brought up about a flea treatment, every dog got flea treatment when they get there, something I didn't realize until she mentioned that. So I think that if your dog is brought in over there and it has to get a flea treatment and then you're paying in pound of fees, I think we should also get that flea treatment as part of the impoundment fee. So when I spoke with um, Ashley over there and I said, well, we don't have the contract yet because at the bottom of this, uh, they want their contract back by December 31st. She indicated to me that it's our attorney that prepares that contract. <laughs> so I have, this is a copy of the other contract. Um, you wanna just, ratify the same language with the uh, changes in the fees, I guess that would be fine. So that's, um, I also wanted to mention, Mr. Uh, we have a resident in Hudson Grove that has an issue paying water because he says he has an alternate water source. I asked him in a letter to, um, supply some evidence of his ultimate water source haven't heard from him uh that could be that he didn't get the mail <laughs> just say it but he hasn't answered my letter so maybe we should take another step beyond the town clerk writing um i can give you the details on yeah this gentleman yeah okay I'll put the down it. yeah um, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I'd have to look into your code, but usually there's provision, there's enforcement provisions within the code as to, you know, somebody who um, decides to stop paying water. Um, and so, um, we did, like you said, ordinarily a, a process laid out that we can get the ball rolling on. Okay. I'll, I'll get to you. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> and I can let you know that um, General Code is working with me on the e code. And um, the first step in this whole big package is uh, to be done by November 12th. And there are questions in here, decisions, they call it, that have to be made, boxes checked. And these will be decisions that I'll make on my own. So a couple of you folks want to be a committee with me, we can read over this and see what you think. Okay, just so you know, they are engaged and we're off and running the general code. I think that's all I have. Oh, um, I want to bring up what happened this weekend with your dog. Just maybe put it out there that so people understand you have to get your dog licensed and the rabies. <clears throat> And we had an instance this weekend, and I thank Cindy for trying to help it out. We tried to help it out. A gentleman down in Hudson Road, so I thought it was safe to Hudson Road. Um, his dog got out the house, um, got picked up, no tags on, no collar. So where it went was to the pound. The guy stopped at my house and begged me to try to help him get that dog because the dog is. Relatively really, really sick and needed heart uh, pills and all kinds of care, and they couldn't do anything until Tuesday morning. 
uh, to thank Cindy for helping out on that. Plus our dog board, we got a hold of the town and they said, if you get there between seven and nine, Saturday morning, Sunday morning, and you know, had the funds paid everything. We found out the dog wasn't licensed and had no rabies shots. We could not do anything. The town could not give it up. It's the law until they got a rabies shot. Then Cindy could have gave them the job. So anybody out there that has a dog, it's important to get the license. It's not very expensive. Uh, and, you know, those are the things that we can't have to, have to help. And this gentleman had to wait until Tuesday about two o'clock. He got a dog. And, yeah. and if you want to hear what he said on my phone, he's putting the dog down because being in the, in the kennel for four days or three days, the dog didn't fare well with it. So, you know, it's sad, but um, the dog was sick anyway. He admits that, but he would rather have it the last few days at his house than in the dog. So, it's just an, something you learn. I mean, we worked real hard on it. Cindy Dick was going to come here at seven o'clock in the morning. I was on the phone with the pound and the dog warden, and we got everything set up. And we said, okay, come and bring your paperwork. And the dog wasn't licensed or. And if we can't give, Cindy cannot give out a license unless the dog has a certificate from a doctor saying he got the rabies shots. So that's the law. And unfortunately, we had it accepted. So just out there, if anybody has a dog at home, come down and see Cindy. It's not very expensive to get the license. All right. Um, Mr. O'Neill. I don't have anything at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a prepared statement I'd like to read at this time. Uh, and the statement is so stated as I prepared this statement, and the views may or not be the views of other councilmen. I've seen that Mr. Marino has done a lot of work for the town for many years, working for people, the employees of the town and many more accomplishments. If I had to list them all, it would probably take me a long time to read them all, and I'd probably miss a bunch. At the same time, after a number of townspeople started asking questions and wanted no answers, the town board said they had to look into it, the allegations, and come back with a meeting or an answer at the next meeting. When the town board started getting answers, a number of other things were found. We had a vote of no confidence presented to Gene Marino, and we had to present this to the townspeople and the state controller of New York. If this was not done, myself and the rest of the councilmen would be in the same boat as Gene is, which was stated in a vote of no confidence on September 21st. The list of items in the vote of no confidence are very, very serious and are written by the state of New York procurement and ethic laws. The laws were written to stop corruption in government and for all elected officials to follow. Please get on the internet and read the procurement and ethic laws and you will see why we did what we did. It was asked to me at a town, by a townsperson, if I was in my shoes, what would you do? His answer was, I'd have to do the same thing as the rest of the councilmen did. In closing, I would like to see the followers of Mr. Rick Marino and the rest of the townspeople of Lake Luzerne give the controller and the state police and anyone else working on this item at the time to get the to the bottom of it, all the allegations and let the ball fall where it may. I would also like to ask the townspeople and the followers of Gene Marino to stop the badgering at monthly meetings and let us do our jobs as elected officials and get through this the best we can. Thank you very much. That's it, Paul. That's it, sir. Thank you. Is that it, Paul? <clears throat> well, I thought we were doing committee reports. Yeah, oh, committee. I forgot. So, 
Um, all I really have, I didn't get one from the senior center, but I wanted to ask you, I saw, I heard on the scanner last Monday that we had harassment going on in the senior center, or I think all the state police there. Have you, you, were you aware of that or you're not aware of that? You're very good or not? Yeah, it was a 63-year-old woman who had an anonymous harassment from somebody about her dog. Uh -huh. I don't know. I, I just wanted to make sure that we were okay, so I didn't, I don't know. I'm sure you were not a you? No. It was last Monday. So yeah, it was early in the morning. I I was well done, but Jim O'Hart didn't want to get one. Okay. Hmm. Not a word. I can get over about it. Oh, just keep that in mind. That's yeah. something out there. I don't know. I'll find it. And then uh, um, from uh, Melissa, uh, you know, everything's going great at the courts. Um, you know, they're concerned about getting an officer, which we need to, you know, or not an officer, but a passport yeah. or whatever, which we talked about doing. And then from Melissa, as far as the uh, assessment office goes, we kind of covered that with Karen about the iPad. Um, you know, she feels that her and Karen work great together, and I can't see how they wouldn't be both great people. On the day to chair, when I asked her if he needed one or two, she said that you guys could comfortably share one. Are you in agreement with that, Karen? I am in agreement with that. Okay. I think uh, Melissa will access it probably more than I will, but yes. Okay. Uh, she said, she said, well, you, we work uh, well together and you're uh, conscious and considerate of each other's work. So that's great to hear. Um, so, you know, just basically what we already covered, I'm not going to take us through all that again. So that's what I have. Thank you. Um, we have the health insurance, they, they all have the health insurance papers. Yes. Okay. Cindy, is there a reason you skipped me on the report? <laughs> it's not here. Oh, well. Well. I'm blaming Cindy. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I didn't stick myself. I went there. To... Sorry, Boris. I just had a couple questions. And, uh, a while back, we got that notice about the marijuana, what's it called, repositories in town, that we have to make a decision by the 31st if we don't want them. Correct? I'll tell you the truth, I you wanted know, to come out. I did not see that. Well, it was everybody's box, I think, but I don't know. I didn't. One month. I mean, I was out oh, for months. I don't. Either, either way, we have it's to. We've been going for a while at the county level and saying, yeah. well, we, 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 we don't want it. We have to opt out by the 31st. Okay. But there's a, there's a lot of tax money involved, but I just want to make sure that we were all included when we made this decision. I didn't make it. I don't know. Um, what do you I mean, if you, if you don't make a decision, then you just they could come in. Okay. Well, but they still have to go through the regular processing of the planning board, zoning board, you know, all that stuff. Why don't we discuss that right now? On what do you feel about it? On eight twenty, you feel about it? I think it's a source of revenue. If they don't buy it here, they'll probably buy it somewhere else. If it's regulated and done correctly, I'm sure it will be by the state and local governments. But uh, you know, we should look to the sales. There's, there's a ton of money in sales tax. It's yeah. more than the general fund. Well, what do you say? Paul's got to go. He's perfect. Uh, it is, and I think we got to get into a discussion about it. I hate to say I'm going to have to leave. Yeah. Okay. I thank you very much for the time this evening. Well, how about? No, I'll make it. Thank you. Uh, you have any opinion on it? I think it would be a good source of tax revenue. Is it for the county or for the county? It's just, it's just every town has to decide what they want to do. And if you if you vote yes or you vote no, and then later on you think I'm missing a lot of revenue, then you have to go up to the referendum, from what I understand. Is that maybe the attorney knows? I'm going to speak speaking out of No, I'm not familiar with the um, the to the deadline. Sorry. Um, no, but, no, um, I, I can look into that. And, yeah, I think you know, if, if you don't decide by the 31st, then they can come in. Yeah. So, uh, and I'll, 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 I'll get the contact with the deadline. Okay. Does that stay in this? No, no. 31st of December. Some yeah, that's so we have a couple of people. Some are going to buy some clothes. Yeah. 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 Some are going to buy some clothes. Why illegal? You know that, Jan. Oh, and the other thing I, I wanted to say is. Uh, the question to you and to Pam, did you redo this budget? Pam? Not, not the new one that they just gave off no, the line. No, no the old one, so the first one. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, right? Yeah. You feel it's 100% transparent? 
Yeah. No, I just because I, I, I know what Paul's about. I just wanted to explain to these guys that the codes, those first four numbers, I don't know that they were that they've been told this, but point ones are payroll, payroll, right? And point fours are contractual. So when you go through them looking, so you know what you're looking at. That was an easy question to answer, yeah. No, but I just wanted your opinion. Is this because I have a couple of questions in there that I'm going to play later on okay. that I don't think are transparent? Well, that's why we have a workshop. You can bring it up now. Uh, you want to we'll get together only sometime this week. And it's easier one on one talking to find out what's going on. Get your answer one way or the other. There is one line in there that I don't like, and that is. Uh, it is community development. It went from 4,000 to 9,000, and it's a point one. What does community development mean? What is that? Well, I don't have my budget. I want to send this one. What's the one there? It is 8689.1. 86. Yep, you're looking at it. Yeah. You, you got me in the I don't stump on that one. I don't remember that. Well, Pauline will be back in a minute. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what it is. It's, 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 it is, I'll tell you what the answer is. It's, uh, it's for Pauline to do the FASB account, which she told us is two checks per year. That's uh, that's, that's the account that when we asked everybody what's right. going on with it, everything supposedly went back to the taxpayers that you said it. And that's that's money that, that Colleen's getting paid to manage that account. Well, that window must have been paid, paid at the other one. I don't have my other one. Well, we can figure out. We're going to have our budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's been being paid, Gene, since we took that as the account over. That's half the three quarters of the income. So we, we really need to get Probably the not. Do you remember this one here on the uh, community development? Community development is part of my bill. Okay. That is for the to be for the ambulance stuff, the uh, cemetery stuff. That's just another question. You do the paperwork and checks. That's part but of why isn't that regular, regular salary? I'm not saying you don't deserve a colony or anything, but you're getting paid here, you're getting paid here, people are getting paid here, people are getting paid. Here. You can't figure that out. You're not new at it. I know you're the first one to say, but when we put this out for the public to see, you're not even going to know what they're looking at. That is the most untransparent budget I've ever seen. There's not anything that dictates community development is paid for the bookkeeper. How does that even make sense? So tell me that's that's being transparent and, and, and I'll, I'll I'll try and believe it, but I just can't understand how it is. And nothing against Colleen. No, no, no. I think you do a fantastic job. Right. 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 About the same thing to you, too. It's just something that they get paid extra to. Right. But why doesn't it say Colleen's pay for doing FASME or whatever she does? It's community development for a bookkeeper? That doesn't even make sense. Right. That's that's mask, that's smoke and mirrors. No, I don't think that's what it is. Oh, I, I, what, I, what is it? I agree with you. It is. And then there's another bundled line under her, her pay. Because your pay, your, the secretary's pay says fifty-eight thousand nine hundred. Now I know you don't make that much. What, what, what line says that? <laughs> on your line. Oh, the personnel line. On your personnel line. Personnel line is also um, got money in it for another clerk, for yeah. a clerk in city's office. There hasn't been a clerk there in five years. Why do we? Why do we move that money into Karen's line? No, because we want there's supposed person? to be a third clerk hired in Cindy's office. They need a third clerk, so that money is there. It got put in last year for a new person. Okay. These these are the questions. Just yes. come see us. We can we can answer them. You know? But we did. Uh, we put it in last year. Yes. Just can we recap the clerk? And then uh, is uh, Barb's paying there too for helping Karen? He doesn't help me. He helps I'm, I'm sorry, Melissa. Yeah. <clears throat> Does she get paid out of that line too? Barb would. Well, yes. Why would that be the assessor's line? I don't. I don't understand why we're. I cannot answer why that was not put on that. It's I mean, just. We, it's, 
it's it wouldn't go on the main assessor's line. There could be, we could put in, um, we could put in another line under assessor, I believe, like a 0.12 um, and put Barb's line there. Yes, Barb's money also comes out of. I just think that it, it's just transparent. I mean, it's, um, you know, these guys, you know, Logan was upset about Jamie's pay the other day. You know, there's a lot of people making a lot more than you know, what she was making. It's a little bit crazy, you know? There's a lot of people making a lot less, too. You're, you're making a lot less? Uh, there's a lot of accountants. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with what I'm saying. I, I was not that personal against her. It's just yeah. an idea behind it. And a lot of the staff that we look at these screenshots. I, I just think that they, they should be more clear. Um, I know and that the only I, reason that because I because I, I started the process while you were out that I learned a little bit about what was going on. I'm like, geez, it's kind of crazy. The only thing I will say is I do have copies that I've seen Hadley, I've seen their Stony Creek, they're very I'm similar. not saying they're against the law, and probably no. the comptroller is fine with it, but I'm, I'm just saying we're really trying to be transparent about what's going on. Here, right? Okay. I'm not sure if there is a all the lines are defined by the state comptroller's office. I'm not sure there is a line for bookkeeper. So that mine might be why mine is under personnel. Okay. All right, we'll look into that. And if there's any other, let me know. Well, we don't know. That's the thing, too. All the lines aren't transparent. I, there's no way anybody could look at this out here. How first you are on a budget and, and be able to tell you community development. We would know that that's going to call in for a job well done. Don't take me wrong, but how would you know that? How would the public know that when we put this up on a website for, for public uh, input on a public on a, a public uh, hearing? Well, community development that's great, but it's actually somebody's pay. Well, well, you're the budget officer. You're it's your job to make it transparent and, and, and legible and understandable and digestible. We can't even do it. How do you expect Joe Joe Public to pay in all this? To be able to, to dissect it and come up with a all right, you made your point. Thank you. And then the last the last one I had was in the water. I was trying to figure out you know the water administration went up to thirty thousand dollars. What page you on? I'm on well page one of water expenses. So I thought that might be purification, but that's in there, and or it might be distribution, Ronnie's line, but that's in there. I don't even this right here. This administration line is a point. That is Cindy and Lori. Huh? That is Cindy and Lori. Both of those. That's part of their point. They get paid because they do all of the water billing and all of the water collection. They get paid a salary out of water also. So their salary is on that. That's combined. Yes. Yeah, they're point ones. So point ones are always payroll. Holly, I know you're not the budget officer on that. My direct this to you, but shouldn't we identify all all these positions in payroll so the public knows what they're what they're looking at? No, it's, it's, it's not done. Why do I have to say it? Everyone well, called me out for being the blue jack and running my mouth all the time. You've been doing this for 15 years. You that, that that's that's smoke and mirrors. It's not smoke and mirrors. It's just the way it was in administration. You know okay. Okay. I'm not accusing anybody it's, from anything wrong. This year, it's been like that. I'm sure. Do you want names on this? Names to be put. That's not me. I'm sure. Actually, I saw that on the 360, right? The 83 code. They do that. Their first page is just list all their employees and what they make on their budget line. Because that's a they have them all posted. Can I make one comment, please? Um, like I said, the state comptroller's office tells us what lines we can use. They name the lines. So I'm not sure that we can name the lines with each person's The lines yeah, actually, yeah. all of the, this is all set for every town around the codes and the names of the lines that you use. So I'm- well, just, When I was able to research, nothing you're doing is wrong. And I'm not saying it is, I'm just saying it's misleading to the public and it's not transparent. That, that's, that's the game we're playing. We want to be transparent, let everybody weigh in on a public hearing. We wanted to put it up the day before the hearing or the day of, but, but and you know, people will say, Well, is that why? Because it's all bundled and we can't figure out anything. Is that why you wanted to wait till the last minute to put it up? We want to avoid that stuff. We want to let people weigh in. And these are the people that are paying the bills. 
everybody on Zoom, everybody in the town, they should be able to see where it is and, and weigh in properly. That's that's all I'm gonna say. All right. Well noted. We'll put things there. And that's not an attack on you, Gene, or Tom or anybody. It's just my opinion that we should be able to come and see me at any time on here. So I'll be next to it. Okay. okay. You want to do it here? That's fine. I got no worries about it. All right. So you got your spot in? Mm -hmm. uh, the health insurance. Um, you all got to be informed by the health insurance? Yeah. Does that have any comments on it? And you look at it? Well, it dropped for their our, our workers. Yeah, it went down a little, a little bit up for the um, retirees. Yeah, retire. It's a good. It's a good deal. Good contract. And good shit. You know, it's probably good. I just said it on the photo. I've been in a lot this year, so it does well. It's not cheap. So, no insurance is cheap. Yeah, no, it's not this. So we'll 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 work on it on the workshop. So we can really approve it. Did you uh did you hear back from about increasing the uh you know, mm -hmm. and then we found out today too, so right? We gotta find out about we couldn't something was canceled on the glass part. Glasses. Say that to me. Yeah. So I'm looking into that. Two questions. Yeah. All right, we're going over the veterinarian group, right? Mm -hmm. That's okay. All right, anything else? Anything out in the public uh, people want to talk about? Um, I have a Julie with her hand raised, and then also John Herring. Um, Julie's hand has been raised for a while. So, uh, Julie, I'm asking you to unmute. Good evening, guys. Hey, you know what? I have a question. How many of you have ever been in a Zoom meeting before? Raise your hand. One, two, okay, three. Okay, so I, uh, it has been such a challenge to hear you, to understand what you're saying because you do not have your own access to the Zoom meeting. Um, you know, uh, this, whoever's in charge of swinging your, whatever it is, laptop around uh, so that we can see everybody, it didn't work. We can't hear, every time you shuffle a paper, every time somebody moves, uh, there's echoing from the uh, microphones. It's really difficult to hear. I would love it if you guys could reschedule this meeting so we could actually understand what's going on. Uh, because then you all have masks too. We don't know who's talking. If you're all in the Zoom meeting, then we would be able to see each of you and hear you. Like you can hear me now, hopefully, right? Um, <clears throat> but anyway, so that's a, just, you know, a technicality for sure. Uh, but the other part, uh, uh, <clears throat> you brought up that, uh, you, somebody wanted access to town land and uh, you all have decided, no, there's no access to town land, even though we pay your salary, we pay the bills um, until it's decided for each individual parcel. So come on. So you know, because you don't have staff for lifeguards for each beach access, that's ridiculous. You know, for example, I went to um, the Jersey Shore uh, this summer at the end of Ida, and there was no, it was swim at your own risk. That's what you have to, you, you shouldn't be putting up no trespassing signs on all of these beautiful lakes up here. You should be uh, swim at your own risk. I believe if you check with your insurance, uh, that is allowable and doable. Um, we should all have access for our tax paying money um, to these lakes, these beautiful lakes up here. Whether there's a, a, um, a lifeguard or not, like 
because I am a kayaker and I want in at Benar Lane. By the way, I'm Julie Brino and I live at 64 Benar Lane. And uh, I have uh, deeded beach rights that will be discussed further, I'm sure. But that's beside the point. The point is uh, the technicality on this meeting has been horrible, ridiculous. And I really, you are passing amendments that uh, I can't hear or understand because you have one, uh, Stan, Stan knows, yeah. You have one uh, laptop or whatever you're using and we can't hear you. There's a lot of background noise. Um, it's frustrating for us. So um, yeah, for and then for you guys to decide, oh, nobody can access uh, the town owned lands until we uh, figure out each individual parcel is crazy to me. You know, uh, speaking from someone who uh, moved up here recently and had my uh, tax assessment raised by $100,000. Thank you very much. Um, but anyways, uh, we need to redo this meeting and figure out, uh, you guys need to figure out how to do a Zoom meeting so that I can understand and hear what you're saying. Okay, thanks. Thanks so much. And you know what else, all you guys? This has been like hysterically funny. I hope each and every one of you goes home and watches this recording so you can hear it and hear yourselves. And, uh, and what are you doing? It's, it, it, nobody has answers to anything. And come on, have you ever attended a city council meeting before? Oh, and the other thing, one last thing is, I heard you don't have a line for bookkeeping? What? Who is the town treasurer? Who is the town according, uh, accountant? You don't have a, a line for bookkeeping? Is anybody keeping track? You keep throwing this word transparency around, but <laughs> I don't think it is at all. Okay, guys, thank you for your service, but I sincerely hope Every single one of you is voted out. Thank you. Okay, you can unmute me now. I don't know. Mr. Herring. Mr. Herring, if you're there, I've requested that you unmute yourself since your hand's raised to say something. All right. All right, moving on. Fred, do you have your hand raised? Hello. Hello. You're, you're unmuted. Oh. Okay, go ahead. Yes, I, I agree with that lady 100%. As far as hearing and seeing and understanding what you people are saying, whoever sat down this lawyer without a microphone, how do we know what this man says? Do we uh, get to have an instant replay? Maybe we could invest some money into a new audio system rather than a Facebook person. That would be a head start in improving the taxpayers' money being spent, well spent. Is there a reply? Thank you, Fred. Did we get a reply? I said thanks, thanks for the word. Thanks for the words. Do I get the last word or do you? Fred, what do you want us to say? 
I would like to say yes, we'd like to invest into a better audio system and get a microphone right. for this new attorney or whoever he is. We have no idea what he said. Well, all right, we understand that. I understand that, Freddie, and I think the rest of them do. This stuff here in Zoom is new to all of us. If the meeting hall was open, we wouldn't have to have this Zoom. So, That's exactly right. We are taxpayers, and we're not able to function the way we should out here in the audience. All right, let me finish. You know, we're not equipped to do this type of thing. And, and unfortunately, Mike is the only one that actually knows, and his, and his daughter knows. I, I don't know how to do it. I wish I did. But we couldn't um, work on it. We're trying. You know, we got the people coming in. The, the thing that's wrong with this, and I've learned this from the county, at the county, each one of us has a little laptop like you got right there, sitting right by our desk, so that when we're in talking, it comes up on the screen and everybody sees it. We don't all have laptops. So and who am I are, speaking to right now? Is that Jane? That's just, it's just me, yes. Yeah, yes, Jane, we don't, I don't understand a word you're saying. Well, I got to take the mask off or something because I'm right into this microphone. Well, maybe that lady is correct that we should have a real professional person doing this rather than somebody in the audience. It's the equipment. It's not the person. Yeah, Freddie, that's it's, it's, it's the equipment. Says, as Mike Bazio says, it's the taxpayers' money that they're working for. Obviously, the taxpayers want a better audio system. And let's put Mike in charge of that. Yes. I've already, I've already, I've already uh, started the process. Okay, so Sorry, give us a report. Well, then give us a report as to what you've found out so far. Okay, absolutely. Uh, we had Ray supply in, and we went through the whole audio rack that we have over there. We have a very, very great system. Unfortunately, none of us knew how to use it. There was no owner's manuals to be found. And I don't know how long we had that rack, Jim, probably eight, 10 years, maybe five, 12 years. So in, in 12 years, every I can't even imagine how many people have had their hands on it trying to make it better. And unfortunately, not one of those people really probably had a good idea of how to do it. Um, I had the guy here, like I said, a couple of weeks ago, we went through, I downloaded all the owner's manuals, we're able to do digital recordings now on it, which we could never do before, which we're doing right now. And they're going to come back and give us a proposal to set up cameras throughout the room, better equipment and uh, projectors and all that stuff that will allow your Zoom experience to be exemplary, but it does take time and uh, we appreciate your patience and, and your input. Well, Mark, we don't really have a lot of time when you people require Zoom meetings. I think that should be addressed right away. I think you should have openly said we have a problem rather than request from the outer people out on the outside. Uh, maybe we should go back to regular meetings until this is straightened out so we actually, the taxpayers, as you say, save money and know what's going on. Thank you for your input, Fred. I appreciate it. Well, Stop when will we get an answer from you, Mike? Say that again, Mike. Fred. When will we have an answer on this? I mean, that's the only meeting that we don't understand. <laughs> I'm just waiting for race supply to supply the quote when they were here the last time. They did some measuring, they did some looking around. So hopefully we'll find it. It is something that we might have to go out to bid for. Uh, they do have some of the supplies are under state contract, which we could buy right away. Some of them, unfortunately, are not. And if it's over the purchasing threshold, um, I'm directed to do things the right way, and we will get three bids and, and get it done as quickly as possible. Well, if that is doing the right way, Mike, you should address this in an open meeting to the public as to the problem, not keeping it a secret, letting that young lady or that lady mention it to us and another person myself. I'm not sure what secret you're alluding to that I kept, Fred, but I've kept the none. Issue, the issue of not understanding what you're saying, the issue of, I think that's an attorney that we now have that didn't even have a microphone to speak to. Okay, that that's a great call. Issue. Okay. Okay, is that, I don't know what the, does that mean okay, do okay, or what does okay mean? No, I think I think you give great feedback and, and we're doing the best we can and I promise you, we'll put our best foot forward to make your experience the best we can as soon as we can. Once again, I didn't understand the word you said. I'll let the next person ask the question. Thank you. Thanks, Fred.
Mr. Goldberg. Okay, I'm unmuted. Uh, I want to respond. I want to, I'll speak lower. I want to respond to the lady named Julie. Uh, she did a wonderful job in uh, explaining the problems we, the Zoomers, have. There are two ways to fix this. Do what Jean Rolinos did. I want Julie to hear this and have open meetings. He's the only one who wanted to continue to have open meetings. There are no other towns in this county that have closed meetings, but open offices. That office is completely open. Secondly, all you have to do in the interim before you spend money is bring each of you bring in your laptop. Make believe you're at home. Take the laptop in and put it in front of you. Sign on to Zoom and we will be able to see you and hear you better and perhaps lower when you're speaking for a long period of time, lower your mask. That won't cost a dime. Just bring in your laptops. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Patricia? Uh, yes, two things. Uh, first of all, um, the next time we have a Zoom meeting or a partially Zoom meeting, could we have the chat function put back? Because we have no chat this time. And the second thing is, I was told not by a board member, by someone else, that the um, recordings of the meetings are on the website. I don't know if that's true. I could not find it. I only saw part of last month's meeting. I had another meeting I had to leave for it. So I would really like, a, uh, if there is a recording of last month's meeting at September, I think it's the 13th, I would really like to be able to see that. Thank you. What was her name again? Patricia. Patricia. Um, yes. We had to do with Zoom where uh, Colleen and I rectified it last week. We had we had to store or re, or save all the meetings uh, recommended by our attorney in, in light of the AT and T uh, cell tower in case there was some issues or accusations that we didn't do the right thing or whatever down the road. So we were saving those. When you have a basic Zoom account, you're only allowed a certain amount of bandwidth. We were four times over our bandwidth on what we were allowed, so we had to save. The, so what Colleen and, and I did was purchase a, a better subscription on Zoom, which will allow us to save everything up to a certain 40 gigabytes, I think it is. Uh, how much that is, I really don't know by each meeting, but uh, we did be proactive and we will have everything recorded and saved moving forward. And starting with tonight, I will put out a link um, where people can just click on it and, and pull up the meeting and, and listen to it at their own uh, leisure or whatever. Will that include next uh, last month's meeting? No. Okay, what about the chat function? Can we have that back? I'll have to look into that. I'm not sure. But uh, there was one meeting where the chats were out of control. There was accusations being made, vulgarity, all that stuff. So I'm not sure if the board had a mm -hmm. function where uh, everybody is subjected to everybody else's opinion and, and, and take on things. It's, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll get the opinion of the board. And if we want it to turn back on again, I'd be happy to do so. Okay, sometimes we'd like to chat each other. We don't have to chat with everybody, but you know, it would be function that I would like to have back. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Rail. Good evening, Rail Zubel, East River Drive, Lake Luzerne, New York. Recently, a Ferris lawnmower was gifted to the town of Lake Luzerne, I believe, from the previous attorney that quit. Am I right about that? Gil Mitchell. Yes. What was? Did he donate a lawnmower to the town? It was. Uh, I think it was brought up in a agenda meeting, but I don't think we ever actually accepted it. Was Was there ever a resolution for that? I'm not positive on the resolution. There was. Yeah. But, okay, uh, that's on delivery. Uh, there was some words said to one of the building and grounds mothers 
that uh, Joe didn't appreciate. And uh, he felt it was his right to take it back after uh, the comments were made to uh, one of their mothers uh, in front of the whole crew about his mother. So uh, Joe didn't feel it was appropriate and took it back. So where was that lawnmower delivered? It was not delivered. It was not delivered to the town. No, but where was it delivered if it wasn't dropped off at Joe's house? Never got picked up, bro. Okay. Unless you know differently, if you do, bring it up. Bring it out. Let us know. From what we were told, buildings and grounds never pick the lawnmower up. Exactly. So that's all we know. Okay. No different. Very good. That was just a simple question I wanted to ask. And this Zoom is a very good way for you guys to keep the public in wonder and a very good way for you to hide. The school board, they're having open meetings. Everybody's having open meetings. Um, there's a restaurant right down here in town, the Waterhouse. The other night, that place was packed door to door. There is no reason for you guys to hide up there and not be able to face everybody when you guys put these masks on you're, you're hiding your identity you're hiding your faces if you guys are going to properly represent our town you have to do it with pride i mean face the public don't hide behind a screen if in the future any of you ever proceed on to the county how can you represent us at the county level if you can't represent us at the town level. And um, that's all I really wanted to say tonight and have a good night, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we still got like three more. <laughs> Mr. Herring. He did, and then it muted again. <laughs> Mr. Herring, you're good to unmute yourself if you have something to say. Mr. Herring? Mr. Herring, if you can hear me, you're able to unmute yourself. All right. I have, uh, looks like one more person. Go ahead and unmute yourself, please. Pam Fazio, F-A-Z-I-O, 597 Lake Avenue. These comments are directed to you and you alone, Mr. Merlino. I gladly accept your cowardly invitation to engage with your classless and disgusting behavior. That invitation came when you decided to allow the attack on Jamie. As you hide behind your Misery Loves Company crew, Please know that I see you. How dare you involve someone's child in your disgusting political circus? You, sir, are the lowest of the low. Pure filth. One would think that you would have spent some quality time during your medical leave seeing the error of your ways and try to save that egotistical legacy you have created in your head. One would think you would come back and want to do better for your town, as you refer to it. I have news for you, Mr. Merlino. This is our town, the citizen's town. Lake Luzerne residents want answers from you, and the board represents them. They don't work for you. That legacy you blame your board for ruining, it's swirling to the left and being sucked into the sewer of an abyss exactly where it belongs. I want you to look real close, Mr. Merlino. Really, really close. That's your hand on the flusher. Yours and yours alone. 
You are one sad excuse of a self-proclaimed leader who would prefer to topple over at a meeting when you're in the hot seat rather than admit any wrongdoing or answer for your malfeasance. You happily use people to do your dirty work and attack innocent people to cover for your actions. If you and your ill-informed followers, you know the ones, the ones you promised or have given positions of power to, <laughs> or provided favors for on the taxpayer's dime, want to sling lies around, you better be prepared to answer. No more hiding behind your famous lines at town board meetings when you're backed into a corner and don't want to answer. I'm not going to debate you. Let's just move on. You're going to get the hard, harsh, sad truth thrown back at you. Be a man. Look at the girl you praise in public, but slander behind her back. Do you see her, Jean? She is right in front of you. She has your flyer. Was there really nepotism in the hiring of Jamie? How many people applied for that job that was properly posted? Did you vote in favor of her hire and then again for her extension? Has she gone above and beyond with everything she has done thus far? Was she even present on September 13th when your trash rag claims that she shut down the Zoom to further the agenda of the board? There wasn't even a meeting held that night, correct? Has Jamie ever muted or threatened to mute a resident of this town? Has she ever refused to put something on the website as alleged? These are rhetorical questions. We all know the answers. Yet you commission this disgusting flyer from a rag site and a criminal individual that you claim to hate and have it pinned all over town and brag that you're going to send it to every town resident. This is what you based your so-called campaign on lies. I hope you're looking at her, Jean. She's looking at you. Are you proud of yourself? Do you feel good about your actions? I find you a sick and twisted individual. You poked the wrong mother bear, Mr. Merlino. As a parent, you should have known better. You know who feels the need to go to the post office with a mask, hat, and sunglasses, in my opinion, Jean? Guilty people. Me, because I'm very disheartened and I am very upset by the flyer that's gone around town. I didn't have to see that. It was the one you were carrying around the county bragging about the other day. The district did it. When you were telling me you were going to send everybody in town, the one that Roger was posting up at Joe's and all that stuff. That's that flyer. That one, Jane. The one you commissioned. You man. Your name's on it. Roger Nelligan's name's on it. Rail Zubel's name's on it. And your name's on it, Pam. That's a clear endorsement of its contents, in my opinion. So I would like to ask the question to both of you, do you endorse those comments to be true? Because I'm pretty upset that I am being accused of shutting down a meeting that never even happened. I was at my other job. I was at my other job and there's publications going around saying that I shut it down, that I was threatening people that happened to disagree with the other people on the board. So please, both of you, look me in the eye. Do you endorse that to be true? Because I'm pretty upset. I've done nothing but post everything on the town website and the chamber website that you've asked and you voted to instate me. I'm pretty upset and disheartened about this. So I would like an answer. Do you endorse the contents of those flyer to be true? That flyer that was done, when we started what we were doing to run, we were not going to sling any mud or anything. Roger did that on his own. And but, he, but your name, your name's on it. Boom, take it down. It's he, mud all over. He was giving wait a minute, let me finish, please. He was giving people crap for taking it down. Could you please give me a minute to finish? I was talking to Mr. Molino, who addressed me, Pam. I'm sorry, go ahead. Mr. Molino asked him to change it, and he did. Where are they? So it's been changed. Where are they? He's got new ones. He gave me new ones. Yeah. He did. Good. But that was done by Roger. That was not done by us. Okay, that's nice. The question I asked, do you endorse them to be true? Do you endorse them to be true? Who's that? That flyer. That flyer, the one that you claim is mudslinging, which it definitely is. Those were deformatory statements. That's all I want. I told them to take it down. Well, they weren't. I, you know, I... I told that I didn't want that flyer done. 
I, I told him that. I'm telling you. And he did that all by himself. So, yeah, that was and this is the person you're endorsing to for a town board position that's running rogue gene? What? That's putting up slanderous information about a girl who's doing nothing. This is creating a hostile work environment. She's trying to pay off her student loans. She's not doing anything wrong. You said at a meeting on September 21st, everything with Jamie was right. That came right out of your mouth, Jamie. So now's the time to tell everybody because I'm sick of seeing Rail Zubel crying nepotism all the time and all these other cowards on Facebook that don't do anything but swing crap around and are worthless. You can right now. Well, I told. Um, it's been changed. Well, the brochure has been changed. The damage has been done, Ken. You can't change something when you're posting it all over town every day and it's running people through the mud. I had right people leering at me the other day you. when I was doing my job. She's carrying you. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, you better think again. All right, all right. Um, I, I, I will not speak to Roger and make sure they're all down. I will call them. I definitely, I have not endorsed that type of stuff. If, if Pam's here. I said that from the beginning. We did. No I questions. brought that up. I did not want any much slinging from the right. beginning. Roger right. well, did that all on his own. Well, unfortunately, yes, it's happened. I've heard great things about Roger. I'm surprised he got anything to do with any of you. All I want to say is that, as Councilman Fazio pointed out, I have another job. I have a primary source of income. I saw this posted on the website. All I wanted was something supplementary because I have student loans. I have an undergraduate degree and I have a master's degree. I'm not going to apologize for wanting to work. And I love this town. I went to school with kids that did nothing that bad mouthed this town. And it killed me because I love it here. I went to school in Vermont and came back here. I could have moved to Vermont. I could have lived with my husband's family, but I got him to relocate here because I said, this is the place that I want to be. I refuse to apologize for wanting to work. This is ridiculous. And I'm very hurt by these defamatory actions. I had people leering at me the other day while I was taking photos around town. And I'm powering, it, I'm powering through it, but this is ridiculous. I love this place. I want to promote it. That's all I want to do. And the fact that that poster went up around town and is probably still up because people were getting yelled at for taking it down, apparently. It's disgraceful. It's disgusting. And I'm appalled. And yeah, I, I apologize to you for that, but I will take care of it. I hope so. That's all I can say. I have no, I hardly have said a word to you. I don't know you at all. What you did say was complimentary, Gene, every time. You know, I need that flyer slanders her behind everybody's back, but you're, you know, you're Mr. You're Mr. Sunshine. Your face. Um, He's your running mate. He's your running mate, Gene. You can't control him. You don't know what he's doing. I'm sorry, Cindy, if this is annoying you, but this is somebody's family. Would you like that done to your children? No, I'm just thinking about it. If the attorney would think this is considered electioneering. Um, it's not electioneering. This is called principle. It's not politics. When you run somebody through the dirt for doing nothing but a good job, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm not. It's principle. It's called morals. It's called being the right man or woman. Well, I got run through the dirt too a lot. Yeah, but it, it's all based on allegations that people well, made. Nobody came and said Jamie did a shitty job or doesn't deserve I, I, it. I, I, not been proven yet, and now I'll wait until it's the public comment time. anyways. It's not the politics. All right, let's close them. Jamie, hold on. Jamie, I'd like to say I'm very proud of you. You know what? Stand up for yourself. And I want to apologize on, on behalf of the board. Uh, you do a fantastic job. If I ever thought I was going to put you in harm's way, I would have never let you take the job. And I sincerely apologize. Thank you. you know what? Most of our kids go off to college and none of them come home. And we're lucky to have you. You are the future of the community. Uh, don't get disheartened by this because it's a, it's a tax on us. It's not a tax on you. And, re and remember that. You know what? Even the mob has codes. These they broke in code. You never go after anybody's kid. This is the character that we're dealing with. Yeah. Marines go. And I have to agree with what David said, Jamie. You know, I think that you're doing a fantastic job. Hold on, David. Not, 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 David. David. I'm not done. Done. The job. Nothing was done wrong. So, so everybody knows Jamie's great grandmother was the town clerk here for a number of years. And I'll tell you what, she'd be very proud of you tonight. I am. Nice job. Tell me. Well, that meeting you ran, right? The 13th? Didn't you run that meeting? There was meeting? no meeting, Pam. There was no meeting. Well, we, when we, was we the last meeting? The room was surrounded by Mr. Molino's followers after we had passed the resolution to close it because of COVID. There was no meeting on September. Which I'm being blamed for. So you better edit your flyer. 
Well, no, I'm so the I, I don't have the October meeting. No, I got the flyer if you'd like it. Thank you. All right. Oh, that or just I have something I want to stay to. You know, but just, there was one that you ran most of an October one. Okay. I couldn't tell you, but it was no meeting on September 13th. Right. But we'll still run Davy down in the dirt for shutting it off early. But just when you think we have this group of writing candidates spearheaded, spearheaded by Benjamin and Bitter, Mr. Molino has already hit the bottom of the barrel. They all show us their willingness and ability to go even lower. What was done to Jamie by Mr. Molino, Pam Petty's, Rail Zubel, and Roger Nelligan was nothing short of a retaliatory and unjustified attack on someone that has done absolutely nothing to deserve it. Nothing. My daughter, Jamie, by all, all of the accounts and feedback we have received as a board, has been a shining light within the midst of all the darkness and despair cast over us by you, Mr. Molino. She brought us to our she brought to our town exactly what was needed and what most towns have already been utilizing and taking advantage of for a very long time. A professional and well-maintained presence on social media, along with an informational and easily navigated website. In doing so, she also saved our taxpayers $60 an hour, $60 an hour, Fred, from our prior, from our prior provider, and is doing a much better job. One thing that has always stood out to me, and it has been a topic of many conversations I've had, is the main ambition of a majority of our local youth upon graduating high school or college. I'm sure most of you know this already, especially those of you that are parents, they want to get out of here. They desire to go where the grass is perceived to be greener, where opportunity seems to knock on every door. Most of our youth and their talent is taken elsewhere for others to enjoy and prosper from. My wife and I are one of the few lucky ones in small, small rural towns. Our daughter chose to get married and stay here, as she said. She loves this town and our immediate area as a whole. She loves her full-time job as a very hard worker and does a good job there, as she does for all of us. As I mentioned earlier, this is not an overly common occurrence. We had her and her husband over last night for dinner. She stops in on her way home from work to just say hi and check on us. She and I get to go to hockey games together. I'll say it again. We are the lucky ones. Jamie graduated with the honors from St. Michael's College and got her master's degree from Bennington. She can go anywhere in this world and do anything she wants. Anything. She chose to stay here in Lake Luzerne and lend us all her talent and commitment. If you think she's grossly overpaid at her rate, I implore you to check elsewhere for some comparison debt. I also think Mr. and Mrs. Tony Cirillo's, I also think of Mr. and Mrs. Tony Cirillo's grandson. This gentleman graduated from Albany College of Pharmacy, one of the most esteemed and challenging medical schools that are out there. Where is, where is he working now? He's working at Stone's Pharmacy right here in Lake Luzerne. He could be anywhere he wants to be, but he's right here serving his community and making Lake Luzerne a better place for all of us. As a resident, I'm thankful they made that decision. Unfortunately, Mr. Rulino and his writing crew, you, Pam, in an effort to mislead the townspeople while enacting revenge upon myself for attempting to do the right thing or making Jamie regret that decision. I'll ask you all to seriously consider the message this group of candidates is willing to send to the rest of our town's youth that will ultimately reach a crossroads in their life as to where they themselves will take their skills and talents. When someone that works hard does a great job for more than fair compensation has to endure a barrage of accusations and lies that can ultimately have an adverse effect on her ability to gain future employment, excel at her current full-time job, or cause her to have to defend herself around town. What incentive do these kids have to stay here? All because people like Jean Merlino, Rail Zubel, Pam Petties, and Roger Nelligan feel she's fair game to use in their insatiable thirst for power and revenge on a board member that only wants the truth to be vetted out and let the chips fall where they may. Her life's work so far, her reputation and her goals are considered to be an insignificant factor in her decision to lie and manipulate the people of Lake Luzerne into voting for them. I have complete faith that all of you are much more savvy and smarter. Let them pull the proverbial wool over your eyes. In closing, Mr. and Mrs. Goldberg eagerly like to call me a bully, as does Mrs. Merlino. Granted, I can be very straightforward and direct as I am now, but I'm only doing what I promised to do when I gave my oath of office to everyone in this town, including all these people that I just mentioned back in January. I try and represent to the best of my ability all our townspeople from every political party, but especially those that have no voice or really don't understand everything that has been going on under Mr. Merlino's watch, unchecked for a very long time. I ask that you all take a moment to rethink what your definition of a bully might may be right now. Is it someone like me that can be extremely direct and obnoxious to those who don't agree with what I'm saying? At least I do it in front of everyone better, whether it be in person or on this crappy Zoom. I say what I say and I ask for the truth. Or could it possibly be people like Mr. Rolino and his write-in thugs that prefer to praise people to their face than run a hatchet job in concert with a person that runs a blog, ones that makes the National Enquirer look like a Pulitzer Prize-winning publication? 
It's one you supposedly hate and called every vile name in the book, Gene, when she wrote a bad article about you under the hiring of Jim Fitzgerald. All done under the cloak of anonymity, full of lies, false inf information, and fabrications. Thank you. Can I say two things? Number one, it doesn't matter who has this job, if it's Jamie or whoever it is. People are upset about the $25 an hour, just like other people for the town don't earn that much. And we already had a person doing our website for $1,000 a year. She was not even told that she no longer had the job. And she's already been paid for the year. Are you directing a question to you, Mr. Bellino? Maybe I'm making a statement to you guys. <laughs> did, you, did you know that, that we already had somebody to do this? Yeah. Did you see the events calendar? had absolutely nothing on it. That was her job. Was, we were told her job was the events calendar. Again, yeah, who's a great person, by the way. We had a great I'm just stating that, that yeah. you... You're saying $60 an hour. Well, if she would have, I mean, she made $1,000 a year. That's nothing. It was Mannix. Uh, I was talking about Mannix. I know now how much Mannix is. I know that. Okay. Well, then you answered I mean, question. we had them. But well, we don't, they're, they're a great company. Right. But they just charge, we save $60 an hour by using Jamie. Google what somebody like her gets. That, that's why the chamber changed their website, too, because we weren't going to pay their And pay. Jamie's working on your website for you. Yes, yeah, I appreciate that. You're getting for twenty five dollars an hour. You're getting a hell of a bang for your buck. And if you don't agree with it, then that's your opinion. And you're entitled. I have not said anything about our website. I appreciate all of our help because if you guys didn't put her on through the occupancy tax as the chamber, we were going to put her on. So um, we how about we have and this meeting? Yeah, very important. Uh, exactly. As long as you're fine, there's seven people with their hands raised now. So if you'd like them to talk, I'm going to have to The people who want to, I mean, we've got to listen. I make a motion to adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn. I second it. I second it. Do you want to listen or you want to? Uh, I do. do. You just told me you wanted one executive session. Yeah, uh, I do. I do. I do know you have seven more. So we'll in the meeting or to go in executive yeah, session? If, if you want to go into executive session, um, I, I would make that motion to go into executive session. Then if you're going to adjourn, go come out of executive session and adjourn and no other business is going right. to be discussed. That's, that's the, the, the process. process that I've got. So we'll move into executive session. And it's a, a personnel disciplinary. It's a personnel. Uh, 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 yeah, mm -hmm. It's a personnel problem. There's no business to be conducted upon return from executive session except to adjourn the meeting. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.